Australia and Afghanistan with terrorist networks. So in May, we decided to port it over to a major metro metropolitan uh, police, and that's where I jumped in. But uh, I can break, I've been caught up to speed, and I've helped move it along past 1.0 and implementing it uh, in the metropolitan area. So the outline of what we're going to go over, the problem of gang violence, a technical overview of the ORCA system uh, that's computing the degree of membership for people who didn't admit they were in a gang. You know, they were caught with five people who did admit that they're in a gang, so what's the probability that that sixth person is lying? Discovering seed sets, the tipping model. We're going to talk about how we figured out who the most important people were for involvement in gangs. Uh, identifying ecosystems. A lot of, there are a lot of subgroups within subgroups, within subgroups, within larger groups. I'll show you the prototype of what we have now and the experiments run. I can show you that with a demonstration and a conclusion. And then where we're going forward, that's not on the slide deck, but this is a capstone for six computer science and IT majors. So this will be worked out all year and improved upon. Uh, and questions and answers. So the problem. Several analytical problems faced by law enforcement. Uh, they have no visual representation. Like he said, they don't put it online like we do. We don't know hierarchical, decentralized, centralized. Um, so that we're trying to uh, create visual representations for a beat cop to understand that he can look at and make his own conclusions. Uh, like I said, determine gang membership on affiliate gang associates. Identify influential gang members. Who's associated with everyone else? Uh, you, you might notice they get arrested a lot, but if, if you look with this data and the outcome of it, the output, you can see that some people know everybody in the gang and they're the people you want to go after. Identify corner crews. It's kind of Smaller teams of about 8 to 10, maybe 12, within gangs of 140, and that's, that's how they operate. And there's no way to really label them corner crews without this. They try to, the police do try to, but this will help them. And then understand the relationships between different street gangs. So after running this, some of the things that surprised the police officer I was working across from, and, and me, to be honest, uh, we saw a lot of relationships between gangs that he thought were rivals. And so... He was going to go to people that were on the ground in that area and ask, well, does that make sense? And what he found was maybe it was a, a narcotic dealer that they both shared in common. So even though they're rival gangs, rival sub gangs, they're at war, they share some people in common, such as drug dealers, higher ups, liaisons, and such. And so we're hoping this was able to uh, show them that. So visualizing the social network, uh, collect data on arrests from arrest records, uh, essentially from this particular police station, we have a data set of all personal information and then a data set that links people together. And that's essentially all the data used. It's all already collected by the police station. We didn't ask them to do anything differently. When they make an arrest, they, they put down time, location, what the charge was, who was there, other gang, uh, gang affiliation. And then we want to provide a useful visual, visualization representative of the social structure of the gang, and I'll show you that later. Um, so like I said, not all gang members admit affiliation, and we can kind of prove it mathematically that, yeah, you kind of are in that gang, and then assign them with a reasonable level of confidence, and one that's easy to understand for a beat cop. That's the goal. It's not uh, crazy numbers that they have to analyze themselves. Gangs are generally decentralized, so we're trying to identify influential members. Who connects all the rival gangs, like I was saying earlier, who are those key players? Uh, yeah, even though they're decentralized, the police officers I was working with do expect that there are key players that at least uh, connect the corner crews, that it's not necessarily hierarchical in structure, but maybe more connector, connectors and liaisons as opposed to leaders, but still they want to go after those influential members to try, try to crush the network. Uh, corner crews are the ones they really do the drug dealing. They're the ones on individual corners, uh, two block radius type of things, and they are members of a much broader organization. And it's not quite the pyramid structure you might think of in the army. It's kind of just 50 corner crews and then headquarters at the top. So uh, we can identify the subgroups and how they relate with each other, who are the connectors. Uh, yeah, I'll show you that. Understand the relationships between the games. Like I said, we found some rivals that were for some reason connected. And it was kind of cool when someone with knowledge, on the ground knowledge, is specific. 
specific situation can could identify, hey, yeah, he's the one that he's a narcotic dealer, he's known dealer, and that's why they know each other. Uh, so yeah, we found relationships between subgroups within the same gang, and we that was normal. Those are corner crews uh, getting to know each other. We found subgroups from rival gangs communicating, and we thought that was extremely interesting. And we found uh, rival gangs where there was one corner crew that for some reason was the only connector between two rival gangs. And so that's not for us to determine, but when you give the police that information, they can try to deduce things themselves, and we're thinking this tool will really help them. So we introduced ORCA, Organization Relationship and Contact Analyzer. And that's the tool we use that Major Shakarian and Seth Hall have been working on for over a year now. So the technical overview is the arrest record data, like I was saying, name, personal information, what the charges were, who they arrested with, gang affiliation. And we create this social network just using nodes and edges. Uh, each edge is one arrest of someone, someone else. And the nodes are obviously the people. So we can compute the degree of membership and use the Megalog framework. Uh, from there, you can identify the core <laughs> members from the tip decomp that Major Shakarian's Major Shakarian's work. Uh, we use the Levain algorithm to partition the network to identify subgroups, and we, de we determine the ecosystem and connectors from there. And then the bottom line from here is that most of this work is completed and we're not going to improve upon. What we want to do is continue to improve upon the report, report generation. We want to make sure that police officers have a clean, crisp user interface that they can't mess up. Easy to use is the bottom line. So here we're using a learn logical rules, logical rules to determine the degree of membership. Essentially, uh, the more connectors they have, the more likely they are members of that given gang. Uh, it uses Makelog, which is major carrying work, to uh, apply the rule to unaffiliated gang members. This is all done in Python, as we'll go into later. Seed sets, discarding seed sets, those are the influential tipping, this is the tipping model. Who are the people that started it? Who can we say uh, reverb, rip, had the ripple effect of introducing people into the game? And so this is the tipping model. This is also Major Shakarian's work. Uh, so what we can see is if this is sample network A, you can uh, remove some of the brim edges and go back to uh, we can see B is a lot smaller and we continue moving down until F has only two nodes and those are supposedly the seed set from where else all come from. And the algorithm for that is simply if half of your neighbors are part of it, you will therefore join. So if we regress backwards, we can form out these two would have led to that. Identifying the ecosystems, what we did, uh, Levain heuristic, uh, maximize modularity. Essentially, uh, how random are these connectors? It's a proportion of how random these connectors are. And so the Levain heuristic simply goes to each neighbor and says, what if we connected it to everyone else? And it would maximize modularity. It's not a perfect absolute answer, but in terms of computational efficiency, it's what we are looking for because a standard PC like a beat cop might have is able to run thousands and thousands of nodes in about 20, 25 seconds, which is what we want as opposed to uh, a much better solution that might take hours. So a prototype, we use NetworkX. <coughs> it's all done in Python. We use NetworkX for the social network data structures. The Kinter is the GUI, the interface. The Matplotlib helps us show the visualizations of it. Uh, we use Pi FPDF as a report generator, the CRANS implementation of the Levain algorithm, and then USMA implementations of Mancolog and TIP decomp. These are all available within the network if you want any of these libraries. The first four I know can be found online. We found major sharing can help you find the last two. So here's what we've designed. This is what uh, some of the police officers have already. And what you're looking at is a visual representation of core membership of an arbitrary gang. G258 doesn't really exist. But you can see we've colored them by subgroups as determined uh, by, pre by the analysis. So we've got, in this one, at least there's the green and the yellows. And 
Now you can click on them and it will show their, their IR number, which is a unique number that each uh, criminal has unique to their fingerprint. And so we thought, what we saw was this was a very useful thing that they love, they actually just love to play with because you click, drag, they like colors. Uh, the nose size is the number of neighbors, so that's really not as telling. So that's just core membership. You can also view a phone network, which would be every member. Uh, subgroup relations would be a map of all the subgroups and their connections. Uh, and then you can open up the Excel file, file to just view this, the raw data. Uh, the PDF here is actually generated just by clicking View Full Report. Uh, you click, drag and drop, pick the game you want to analyze, click Full Report, enter the name you want, and click Generate, and you'll have about, if you do a full report, it's about 30 pages, all the pertinent information. Tap the report is about seven pages, shortens it up. And so the idea was any cop could sit down at his desk, run the algorithm, pick a game, notice that there's something interesting about the game, decide that he wants to show his boss, click view full report or view text report, bring it and say, here's what I found, let me show you what's interesting. And from there, they can redistribute it out and be that simple. And any anybody could do this, anyone could look at it, anyone could make their own deductions by what, how these three subgroups are related here, who are the connectors, maybe I know this person. So this is the general prototype of where we're at, it's moved on from here. Uh, into the evaluation of what we've seen. Uh, that's just the raw numbers of what we used to evaluate. It's one district out of about 18, which was scary, because I thought, I thought when I saw the arrests and the number of gang members, I was looking at an entire city, but I was looking at one district. That was disheartening. But it's 5,400 arrests, uh, 11,400 relationships among those arrests, 1,470 individuals, and then 1,913 relationships among individuals. And that's what we work with to, as a test. So the evaluation degree of membership is uh, the degree of membership and connections in a given gang mirrors that of previous work with Lucas and Sola, 2010. And essentially, uh, the number that came out is zero. It's negative. It's a negative number for one is the degree of membership. It's, it's one when they self-affiliate anything less than if they haven't, and it mirrors that of Sintola who did, I believe it was a mobile phone network, and he had the same, he had the same type result. Uh, so all 180 un unaffiliated gang associates uh, were assigned a degree of membership greater than zero, and it, it turns out that that was, that was the right number, because in the end, a bunch of them, and I was working with the police officer, he said <coughs> about, 30 out of 35 he looked at were, you know, no members. They just didn't get the data down. Uh, so the majority of these individuals would be assigned a degree of membership greater than 0.5. So what we told the police officers to look at, just we just said multiply by 100 and say that's the percent chance that they're a member of the game. And that was simple enough, and we think that's effective enough. So 50% chance, 60% chance. I can show you later what the breakdown. It's pretty simple. And for any cop to look at and say, there's a 10% chance, there's a 50% chance, we think that's useful enough. So here we just see, you know, the degree of membership improves with the number of neighbors for all the gangs analyzed. Essentially, this shows right here, this is, there were about 175 that were between, were between uh, 50 and 60% percent, percent degree of membership. And, and uh, about 75 that were between 60 and 100 percent, and what we like to see was that very few fell way below that. So we were able to prove associations as opposed to 30 percent maybe. Uh, identifying the C set. So this this is specific to the metropolitan area, but essentially there are two racial groups within the gangs, and anecdotally they tell us that racial group A is more hier hierarchical. Racial group B is more decentralized, and we try to see if what we saw makes sense with that. So we found on average that gangs in racial group A had C sets that were smaller than racial group B. What that means is their in racial group B had a much larger C set. There were more B players. There, so we assume 3.86 is not a large number. Uh, so it's not that telling, but we think it's in line with the fact that racial group A is. Uh, 
much more hierarchical because there are uh, fewer information, fewer influential people making more of an impact. The community structure that was found through the Louvain algorithm, uh, we found we were looking at modularity and we found that ratio group A had 11% less modularity than those in ratio group B. Uh, we were assuming the modularity, we were trying to make that pyramid structure so that would lead to more modularity as opposed to a decentralized complete network. So 11% was okay. The, that was the results of these are all games from ratio group B, all the games from ratio group A, and then uh, vein modularity. So evaluation of the ecosystem. The ORCA also generates ecosystems, like I was saying, that are not of individuals, they're of the subgroups and their connections to each other. So uh, what this helped the particular police department look at were allied gangs, mutually supportive operations. Uh, what I was told anecdotally, and I think it's the biggest problem they're facing, is retaliation. If gang A attacks gang B, gang B does not retaliate. They hire their buddies to do it for them because gang B is wise enough to know that, that the police will be all over them. So they hire out their buddies to carry out the retaliatory attack. So the idea is, knowing the subgroup ecosystem, you can see who are they going to try to call up, who are they going to try to pick out to carry out the, the revenge. So here's an example of subgroup relations map where each node is a subgroup and uh, gang G322 is again, that's, it's a real gang and it's real data just with a fake name. We can see who the key subgroups are that have connections all across the board. Again, this interface is clickable which uh, and straggable and they can zoom in, zoom out, uh, move, rotate it around and anyone can play with it and come to their own deductions. So evaluating connecting individuals, this is just displaying the information in a different way. Uh, we like this one because you can pick someone out by their IR number and hone in on them and say they're a member of group X, but they're connected to group Y, Z, A, and B. And so we can see even right here, they're a member of gang G197, which is the major one. They've been assigned, assigned to subgroup 1 by the algorithm. But look, they also have connections to subgroups in a whole different gang 383, gang 465. And so you can look at that and say, well, why are they, if, I don't know because these are all fake names, but are these rivals? Why are they friends with these rivals? So, oh, I can show you a demonstration real quick. So it's real simple. It's create new, open existing, you couldn't see any more full proof we hope. So I've found the directories for all the data. Again, the data is simply the arrest relationships. It's a SQL query where it's on one side is one name, one IR number, the other side is other IR numbers with connections. Arrest records, that's where the IR numbers and names and streets get put together, although for all of us it's just maps. There's no real data. Contact card relationship and contact card records are the same thing. However, uh, it's not a rest. Like I said, it was found out of street quarter late at night, acting shady. So if they browse to the right part of their system where the data is stored, uh, they pick where they want uh, the test to happen. And we just call it test one, two, three. And this is, so right now it's found the node and it's running through it. As the system gets improved, uh, this is going to Get rid of this because I'm sure anyone would say the computer's breaking when this is happening. But mm -hmm. with a little progress bar and a green, a green thing that moves across, <laughs> it probably looks a little better. But this takes, honestly, under a minute on any computer, even the slowest computers we saw there. So it's done on mine. And so I was really happy I got autocomplete to work. So I was pretty happy about that. But you select any name. So these would all be real names that uh, any police officer would recognize. So G137. Well, that's a boring game. But and so this this I know G322 is the one I played with the most because it's the largest of the data we had. And like I said, 
it's pretty easy to zoom in and play with. And right here, what we were noticing when I was demoing this with the, the police officer I worked with, who's this player? Well, why, who's he connected to? Because we noticed he's in this light sky blue subgroup. He's been assigned to that. And he's connected to this, this other purple subgroup and this turquoise teal subgroup. So he's a key player. And then even more interestingly, in this representation, it turns out there are two key members in here. It's not just two nodes. But essentially, you can zoom in and see that these there's two guys in there that connect all of these members. And what that could be, it could be a fluke in the arrest. Maybe all of these people got arrested with one of them, and on a later date, all of these people got arrested with the second one. But that's for any police officer to do. And that's something that jumps out at anyone. So they, they can quickly zoom in, uh, see the, the IR number, and they have a system that's real simple, just type in the IR number and a person's information, full history pops up real quick. So while IR number looks doesn't tell us any information, it's what they use most commonly. And then the 1.0 means they self-admitted upon arrest that they were in game. That's the degree of membership. So I, I don't know where I could find one that's less. There, okay. So there's 73% chance of what we're telling the police officer that this person's a member of gang G322. So you can play with a uh, full map, a map of the core members as determined by the analysis, the subgroup relations. So this is the same one we had on before. And you can zoom in and try to figure out. So that's a, that's a whole different game. This is game G322 that we're analyzing. And we see that game G383 is highly connected within this game. So probably a police officer might be able to deduce from there why. So the idea was you could just click view PDF and create a semi-professional looking report to hand into a security. And this a pretty formal looking report with general statistics. Here we have degree of membership. There, this again is a small boring game, I picked again by mistake, but it'll lay out the certain number, the certain, the admitted, and it'll lay it out like this, you know, between 90 and 100% total numbers, and then uh, the degree, the network modularity number, and uh, Ray Sharkarian also made sure to put in words what that meant, organization, ill-defined subgroup structure, and if we scroll through it, There's the boring full map, which would be more exciting. Uh, the names, addresses, nicknames, aliases. Uh, this would be the core members, which is essentially the same map as a small game. Subgroup relations, I guess there's a subgroup involved. But uh, we display all the information. We show the subgroup G175 is strongly connected to a different gang subgroup, and there are five connectors, and so these are their IR numbers. So an officer could maybe type those in and see, try to figure out uh, why those five people somehow connect maybe two rival gangs. Um, and then this is the same information displayed differently, so by their ID number, their IR number, what groups, what subgroups they're a member of, and which ones they connect to. And so you saw, this is small gains, so the, the generation of this report didn't take very long, but you can see how it would be useful for anybody to sit down, click view PDF, and produce something that they can hand in. Uh, so that concludes my demonstration for now. I can show you more later. So in the conclusion, the, the, the software is all from the back, ground up to aid the law enforcement personnel. Uh, we're working with them to deploy the system in the field. We're able to put it into a couple computers and watch some of the officers play with it, what were they struggling with, what they like to see. Uh, and we will refine what I just showed you, uh, simple, maybe make the PDF more professional. Uh, 
Essentially, the algorithms we're using aren't going to change. It's more of the user interface, making it simpler, making it more efficient. Uh, again, loading bars. Uh, and then this is a whole this is a whole other capstone that we're working on to integrate. So at that point, any questions about?